David Thompson was born in England in 1770 and came to North America as a 14-year-old boy. Thompson arrived in Manitoba as an indentured servant for Hudson's Bay Company. Thompson went on to become a fur trader and a renowned cartographer. Thompson mapped nearly 2 million square miles of North America, earning himself the title, the greatest practical land geographer that the world has produced. During his travels through the Rocky Mountains, Thompson wrote of strange tracks he encountered, most likely from a mammoth. He wrote, January 7, 1811, continuing our journey in the afternoon, we came on the track of a large animal, the snow about six inches deep on the ice. I measured it, four large toes of each four inches in length, to each a short claw, the ball of the foot sunk three inches lower than the toes, the hinder parts of the foot did not mark well. The length, 14 inches by 8 inches in breadth, walking from north to south and having passed about six hours. We were in no humor to follow him. The men and the Indians would have it to be a young mammoth, and I held it to be the track of a large old grizzled bear. Yet the shortness of the nails, the ball of the foot, and its great size was not that of a bear, otherwise that of a very large old bear, his claws worn away. This the Indians would not allow. Naturally, many in the Bigfoot community these days cite this account as evidence for the existence of an enormous ape-like creature in North America. But it seems clear that the Indians in the party were thinking the tracks were from a mammoth, not from a Sasquatch. And there is no shortage of indigenous legends of Bigfoot-like creatures. At any rate, Thompson wrote of the tracks again, saying they staggered him. I now recur to what I have already noticed in the early part of last winter when proceeding up the Athabasca River to cross the mountains in the company with men, four hunters, on one of the channels of the river we came to the track of a very large animal which measured 14 inches in length by 8 inches in breadth by a tape line. As the snow was about six inches in depth, the track was well defined, and we could see for one full hundred yards from us this animal was proceeding from north to south. We did not attempt to follow it. We had no time for it, and the hunters, eager as they are to follow and shoot every animal, made no attempt to follow this beast. For what could the balls of our fowling guns do to such an animal? Report from old times had made the head branches of this river and the mountains in the vicinity the abode of one or more very large animals to which I have never appeared to give credence, for these reports appear to arise from the fondness of the marvelous so common to mankind. But the sight of the track of the large beast staggered me, and I often thought of it, yet could never bring myself to believe such an animal existed, but thought it might be the track of some monster bear. Thompson concluded that he could not say for certain whether or not the mammoth creature that the Indians believed in existed or not. The circumstantial evidence of the existence of this animal is sufficient, but notwithstanding the many months the hunters have traversed this extent of the country in all directions, and this animal having never been seen, there is no direct evidence of its existence. Yet, when I think of all I have seen and heard, if I put my oath, I could never assert nor deny its existence, for many hundreds of miles of the Rocky Mountains are yet unknown, and though the defiles by which we pass, distant 120 miles from each other, we hasten their march as much as possible.